Welcome to Course 3, Unit 3, Lesson 1, What is Stock Volume? Although a lot of people uh, hear this term, uh, many don't understand what volume actually shows them about uh, the current position and the value of a business. So that's what we're going to be discussing in this lesson. In order to uh, understand volume, I'm going to go ahead and use a company that's on the, on the stock exchange and uh, that's been in the, in the news a lot because the bank is doing fairly well under kind of stressful conditions for uh, finance companies. And that's going to be Wells Fargo. So that's going to be the company that we're going to be using throughout this demonstration. Okay, so the current market price for Wells Fargo on the 6th of July 2012 is $32.99. Um, as you can see below there, we have a chart of the market price for Wells Fargo. Now, if you've been taking all of these lessons on Buffett's books from the very first lesson up until now, uh, you've probably noticed that I've never showed you a market price chart uh, for any stock. And that's because I don't care what the market price of a stock is. I only care what I think the value of a stock is. All of this chart tells me is what other people have traded this company for and where it's at right now. And that really doesn't mean all that much to me. And as we go through this lesson, you're going to see why I have that general opinion. Okay, so I said that we were going to be using Wells Fargo, and when we pull up the uh, stock ticker for Wells Fargo, um, we can go ahead and look at how many shares outstanding there are on the business. Okay, so let me show you how and where you'd find that number. Okay, here I am at MSN Money, and I'm just at the top level page, and so I'm going to put in the ticker for Wells Fargo, and it's WFC. And I hit Enter, and it takes us to the top level page for Wells Fargo. Okay, so all we have to do to find out how many shares there are of Wells Fargo, we just got to scroll down until we see this right here where it says shares outstanding. Okay, and you can see I just highlighted it right there. And it says 5.3 billion. So that's how many shares of Wells Fargo has been sliced up into is 5.3 billion shares. So what I've done with this picture is I've graphically represented uh, how many shares there are of Wells Fargo. Inside of this circle, let's just imagine that this circle represents the entire company of Wells Fargo and that each one of those dots is symbolic of a share inside of Wells Fargo. Okay, I have 531 dots inside of this circle that you're looking at. Okay, so that means that each dot represents 10 million shares, Okay, which is a lot of shares, but there's 5.3 billion total shares inside of that circle right there. So when we look at the volume, the number that's listed whenever we look up a, a company, that is the shares traded from one owner to another in a single day. Okay, so when you see the volume says whatever, say it says 10, that means that 10 shares were traded to some other owner for that given day. So let's go ahead and pull up the volume for uh, Wells Fargo off of MSN Money. Okay, so here we are back at the MSN Money page for Wells Fargo. And as you remember, when we first came to this page, we went down and we saw how many shares there were of uh, Wells Fargo outstanding, and we found that there was 5.31 billion shares. Now, when we go up and we look at the volume, we can see that Wells Fargo had 17 million shares traded on this day. Okay, so today they had 17.9 million shares traded. So when, you, when a person would come to this page and they might just go straight to the volume and look at that and they say, oh wow, almost 18 million shares were traded. That number really doesn't mean a lot. It just sounds like a, like a lot of shares. So you gotta put that in context. You gotta figure out, well, how many, you know, what percent is that of the company that was actually traded? And so that's what we're gonna do when we go back to the slides. So when we look at our uh, symbolic representation of all the shares in the company, you might be able to see down at the bottom left, I've got one of the little dots highlighted in red. Okay, Now I should probably have about one and a half to almost two dots highlighted. Uh, that's, that's my mistake, but um, when you look at that, you can see that it's just one dot out of all those 531 dots inside of that circle. Those are the people that are determining the, the market price. So when you take a step back and you think about that, that that one little tiny dot is the group of people that are actually determining the market price for the entire company, for all those other shareholders that are holding their shares of that business, only that small group is actually determining that price. And what you gotta keep in mind is those people aren't determining the value of the company, they're simply determining the short-term price of the company. 
So you might be asking yourself, so how can we use volume to our advantage? What, what is it that we can learn from all of this? Well, here's what I'm going to show you. So on 2 March 2009, that was kind of at the height of the stock market crash. Um, and when we look at the volume of shares that were traded on that day for Wells Fargo, we can see that there was 1.1 billion shares uh, that were traded just on that given day. That's almost one-fifth of the entire company changed hands to new owners. Okay, And that was the highest volume that Wells Fargo had seen in 10 years. So how could we use that bit of information to our advantage as a stock trader? Well, when we go to the chart, when we go to the price chart, and this is the price chart for Wells Fargo over, a t over the last 10 years, okay, that date that I just showed you where the volume was the highest that it was for 10 years is right there at the lowest point on our market price. Okay, so that should uh, raise some interest for you. So what we can learn is that when the volume, when we have a really large volume relative to previous days or years or months, um, this means that the price is at a peak or a valley. So let's go ahead and look at the, the numbers on Wells Fargo back on that day where they had enormous volume traded for the company. When we look at that, the market price was $7.50 was the price that you could buy those shares for. The book value on the company was $23.43. The earnings per share back in 2009 was $1.75. So it wasn't even in a negative EPS situation as a bank stock. It was in a positive situation. And they were also paying a dividend, which I don't even have listed here. Um, when you look at the debt to equity, it was a 2.17. Now, I know I've, I've preached and I've said that you want to try to find a company that has a debt to equity below a 0.5. Whenever you get into finance, when you get into different sectors, like the finance sector, um, this debt to equity is actually extremely low for a finance company, and that's because the company deals, their business is debt. So that's why you're going to see the debt to equity pretty high. So when you looked at these numbers back in 2009 and you would have seen that volume just hitting all-time highs, you would have known that this was probably the, the bottom of the uh, time for, for Wells Fargo. I know that's easy for me to say three years later. But when you look at the numbers and you look at that volume that was being traded, um, a person who's a really professional uh, stock trader would have been able to identify this, and they, those were the people that were buying up all those shares. I'd be willing to bet that if you looked at how many people were selling their shares versus how many people were buying it, the number of sellers would far exceed the number of buyers, which shows you that you had a few smart people out there that weren't scared and actually knew the value of the company and they were buying all the shares from the people who were scared and didn't know the value of the company. And you could all use the volume in order to, to determine all of this. So the, the point is use volume to your benefit. First thing that you need to, to understand is that you need to remind yourself that traders are, are only determining the price and not the value. And the, the best way to understand that is think of that circle and think of all those shares inside of it and remember that one dot was determining the price, not the value. The second thing that I want you to take away is that use that volume to help you predict the right time to buy more assets or change into a better position. Uh, remember, when the volume is really high, it could also mean that the price is overvalued and that people are getting out because they feel that the, the stock is way overpriced. So when you see a high volume, it's telling you one thing. You're either at the top of the chart or you're at the bottom of the chart, and that's for you to determine. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if you use a lot of the tools that I've taught you throughout the site, with it, whether it's course one or course two, you're going to be well equipped and understand which part of the chart you're on, whether you're at the top or the bottom. So that should be generally pretty easy for you to predict. But use that volume to help predict that and determine where you're at. So this concludes course three, unit three, lesson one, what is stock volume? I hope the tips that I gave you will help you out and I look forward to seeing you in the next unit.